Welcome to the Silicon Roads Chess Channel. This channel will show you how to use chess engines like Leela and Stockfish as powerful training partners in the opening, middle game and end game, and help you improve your chess in exciting and modern ways. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler. I'm a two times British champion. I've been ranked in the world's top 50 for many years, and I'm also a prolific author. My most recent book was Game Changer, written together with Natasha Regan, which brought the amazing chess games of DeepMind's Alpha Zero to the world. My next book, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which will come out in the last part of 2021, is just like this channel, all about learning from and training with engines. This video is in our Engines and Opening series and it deals with the main line of the Queen's Gambit Chigorin defence. We start off with a great win by um, uh, Stockfish against Alpha Zero, and then we move on to perhaps one of the highest quality games ever played in this opening, a very, very, very long time control game played between Stockfish and Leela. This video gives plenty of new insights into existing opening theory, and uh, I think that uh, both Chigorin players and White 1D4 players will be very interested by the content of this video. Let's get into it. Well, our story starts at move nine, but as usual, let's spend uh, just a few minutes playing through the moves leading up to that position. Always like to do that, uh, even when reanalyzing positions that I know well. It just helps me uh, settle and focus on the position whilst, uh, yeah, you know, understanding the logic of what's gone on before often gives ideas for what to do next. So we'll start off by examining the game Stockfish Alpha Zero, played in January 2018. Now, as I'm sure everyone knows, um, Alpha Zero's score against Stockfish was especially convincing in games originating from the standard starting position. Uh, there was also a series of games using starting positions uh, taken from the TCEC Season 9 Super Final, which was won by Stockfish. Um, Alpha Zero again won clearly by 17 wins to 8, but was clearly under more pressure in openings, which it would not choose to play from the starting position. And one of these was the Chigorin. Let's take a look at it. So uh, we start off with 1d4 d5, c4, and knight c6. And this is the Chigorin defense. Um, I mean, black blocks in its most natural form of pressure against the white center. That's the c5 break. Um, and also admits to support its own center with a pawn, you know, either with c6 or with e6. However, black's uh, early pressure against the d4 pawn um, and the support of the knight c6 for the e5 break they give white uh, you know, a few things to consider when, uh, when developing. So knight f3 is the classical main line. You know, white increases its support of the d4 and the e5 squares, so it dissuades black from playing e5, and it also introduces the threat of uh, c takes d5, followed by knight c3, when um, yeah, black's foothold in the center is just blown away. So, um, yeah, I mean, the next moves that, um, that Black plays, they really give the Chigorin its, uh, its unique character. Black plays bishop g4, um, c takes d5, bishop takes f3, g takes f3, and queen takes d5. And uh, this manoeuvre, um, well, destroys the protection that white added to the d4 pawn, and thus stops white from meeting uh, queen takes d5 with knight c3, because... Uh, up, queen takes d4 would happen. So, um, black play, white plays e3, and black plays e5. Black gets the e5 break, but now, well, black's feeble grip on the central light squares is challenged with knight c3. And, uh, well, black's reaction continues the uh, unusual trend started with bishop g4. Black takes that to its logical conclusion and gives up its second bishop, for white's knight to temporarily halt white from uh, advancing further in the centre. So bishop d2, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and now queen d6. And uh, yeah, I mean, this move was the last move specified as book um, in the game between Stockfish and Alpha Zero. Um, but it's also Stockfish's and Leela's choice 
when just given the the opening position after three bishop g4 so it's uh, it's obviously a pretty important move um and this is our first uh, critical position and it's worth uh, just spending a bit of time just to understand what this chaos on the board means now, i mean the idea of queen d6 first of all is that um black stays out of range of uh, e4 and c4 and uh, thus prevents white from expanding in the center with uh, c4 and d5 um but i mean in nine moves white's gained the two bishops a nice strong center um and um yeah i mean uh, also um a number of open files for its pieces you know the rook on g1 or the rook can come to b1 as well and black's gains are, are harder to define i mean for the moment the white center uh, is stimmied by the pressure against d4 um black hasn't got a significant lag in development despite spending uh, two moves with the queen early on um and black's got plenty of you know possible squares for the pieces there's plenty of open lines However, in general, it's, it's not easy to think of a black plan that could trouble white. You know, I mean, black's approach will generally be to find uh, active posts for the pieces and then just react to white's attempts to expand in the centre and activate his bishops. Now, white's most obvious way of uh, almost likely attempt uh, to, uh, to play is to play the move f4. e takes f4 and then e4. And at the cost of a pawn, White relieves the pressure against d4 and, uh, well, gives himself a double pawn centre and, um, yeah, and also gives the, the, the bishop some, uh, some open lines to, uh, to attack on. Um, but, I mean, in general, it's not a good idea to do this straight away um, because, um, um, I mean, White really wants to make it a bit uncomfortable for Black to hold on to the f4 pawn. And in this position, Black could play knight e7 and then play the knight round to g6 defending uh, f4 and that f4 pawn is a little bit annoying because you know it, it restricts the bishop on d2 so um for that reason white tries to uh well before playing this move f4 um white tries to exploit a few of its other pressure points on the uh, on the black position to weaken black a little bit before hitting him with that idea and i mean rook g1 is uh, one idea um attacking the pawn on g7 and the idea is that after g6 you could play um, something like f4 could play it immediately or maybe a move later f4 and and e4 and black doesn't have this maneuver knight e7 to g6 and this is pretty much what um what alpha zero did in uh, in the game against um against uh, stockfish it played uh, rook g1 g6 queen b3 knight e7 f4 e takes f4 e4 castles castles f6 and h4 just stopping g5 and uh, this was alpha zero white against stockfish's black and uh, yeah i mean uh, uh, alpha zero had a, a very nice advantage here but uh, stockfish played beautifully and uh, and managed to uh, to hold this in a, a long and uncomfortable end game um, but it's a very interesting way of playing you know and uh, very dangerous for black however um stockfish actually played the most natural idea in uh, in this position which was to play the move queen b3 and queen b3 hits uh, b7 and gives uh, black a dilemma. Um, I mean, first of all, that castle's queen side um, allows queen takes f7, which, you know, black has some counterplay, but in principle, this is quite annoying. Um, if you go b6, then, um, I mean, really, there are a lot of weaknesses there um, along the light squares. And, um, you know, white can play a move like rook g1, g6, and then f4. And, uh, yeah, you know, in this particular position, I mean, uh, black's really, you know, full of weaknesses and white's got a great centre. Um, it's a very, very unpleasant position for black. So um, for that reason, what black has tended to do uh, in the, uh, the high class engine games is after queen b3, it's just sacrifice the, uh, the b7 pawn with knight e7. Queen takes b7 and now at some stage castling king's side. And actually castling king's side, that's what alpha zero did um, against stockfish. So alpha zero black, stockfish is white. And um, yeah, I mean, what is this position? Well, I mean, alpha zero gave itself uh, a 36.5% expected score after this pawn sacrifice. That's uh, a definite advantage for white, but it's not a total disaster. So how can black make the most of its chances? Well, I mean, in the center, black's essentially just holding white back with this pressure on d4. 
So, um, um, you know, black's unlikely to be able to achieve anything really in the center unless white gets really careless. So really, black should be trying to uh, generate play on the wings, either via the damaged uh, king side or via the damaged queen side. And well, you know, since white grabbed the B pawn um, uh, and has opened the B file for the rooks, you know, it just feels very natural to focus primarily on, on the queen side. And, uh, you know, in particular, the idea of playing um, uh, rook to b8 into b2, uh, attacking the bishop on d2 and the isolated pawn on a2, you know, that, that, that's a key idea. So what alpha zero does um, is uh, it plays very flexibly, first of all. Um, queen a6, rook fd8, rook d1, and rook b8. So just um, um, placing its rooks on, on the open, half open uh, files and just really waiting to, uh, to react to white's attempts to um, develop its kingside. Now, you might think that the, uh, the obvious move here is to play um, bishop e2 just to develop and threaten to castle kingside. But here black can play this lovely idea, queen g6, threatening to come into g2, king f1, queen e6, threatening to... Um, uh, uh, play queen h3 check and also to play um, rook b2 hitting the uh, the pawn on a2 and it's quite a quite a nice combination really of play on the uh, on the king side and on the queen side there so um, well stockfish came up with this uh, with this move and played h4 and I did have to uh, to do a double take and uh, just have a quick look at uh, you know who is playing white in this position because this looks like an alpha zero move. But uh, in actual fact, it's stockfish. And um, but this is just a, a very concrete move. The idea, in fact, is to um, play h5 and take away the g6 square, primarily from the queen, but also from the black knight. And then once you've played h5, actually it'll be a bit safer for white to go on to the king side. So alpha zero played the move h5, which looks tremendously unnatural to me but it does have the big advantage of securing g6 for the black pieces fixes this pawn on h4 as a possible future target and also you know i mean alpha zero never likes allowing the rook's pawn to move up so uh, quite understandable that uh, alpha zero at least decides to block the h pawn before it goes any further so bishop e2 rook b6 if black plays uh, queen g6 now then um, um, we just play king f1 and uh, well queen e6 no longer gains a tempo because uh, well h3 is covered you know that's uh, one of the uh, one of the nice ideas there so bishop e2 rook b6 is played queen c4 a bit of a mysterious um, um, idea coming up now queen c4 rook db8 and then queen a4 hmm what is stockfish doing with these queen moves i mean if it wants the queen on a4 why doesn't it play queen a4 immediately on um, on move 16 why isn't it play queen a4 here and i mean in general you know the the queen is better on uh, on a4 rather than c4 um absolutely you know it um uh, it uh, covers the c2 square it um frees the uh, the c pawn why is even got an idea of going bishop c1 to a3 it's a good square but um but black actually has a gorgeous idea here which is to go queen g6 threatened to come into g2, king f1, and then rook b2. And the idea is that um, bishop c1 is met by queen c2. Um, a gorgeous little idea there, winning that tempo against the, um, uh, the queen on a4. And after queen takes, takes, well, black's hitting two pawns, c3 and a2. So um, um, actually what, uh, what Stockfish does is incredibly subtle. It goes to c4 first, and after rook db8, it goes queen a4. And, uh, well, as we'll see, um, uh, well, let's just uh, have a look at the idea. The idea is that if queen g6, king f1, rook b2, white can now play e4 because black playing rook db8 has weakened the pressure against the d4 pawn. Incredible tactics, isn't it? It's, um, I mean, another um, idea of, uh, of playing queen a4 is actually a rather surprising one. It's just to play the move d takes e5. Um, and after knight takes c5 to play f4 and c4, for example, if we, you know, if we played a move like, oh, I don't know, king h8, um, we could play d takes c5, knight takes c5, f4, and follow up with c4 and bishop c3. And, uh, well, I mean, white's ruined uh, its pawns, but actually, uh, um, yeah, the bishops have come alive and uh, it's a very dangerous position for, um, for, um, 
for uh, for black. Um, but you know, queen a4 is not. It's a very interesting idea, but it's not the only idea. Um, Leela actually in this very in its white very 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 long time control game against Stockfish played uh, another interesting idea which we which we know well very typical of course this f4 um, uh, e4 idea but Stockfish managed to generate an enormous amount of counterplay on the seventh rank so rook b2 queen d3 rook takes a2 bishop f4 queen g6 bishop d3 rook bb2 Bishop b3 was played by Leela, e5 suggested by um, uh, Stockfish, although after queen c6, you know, black still's got plenty of, uh, of counterplay, even in the ending. Um, and after bishop b3, knight to b3, um, yeah, I mean, Stockfish managed to, uh, to hold this without, in all fairness, too much difficulty. So this f4 and e4 doesn't look super good. Stockfish itself was actually looking at d takes c5 immediately. So not worrying, you know, I mean, the point of uh, queen a4 was that it, uh, it moved out of the tempo you gain with knight e5. But Stockfish, um, uh, a very long time control, thought that uh, this was still going to be very good for white. Knight f5, rook g5, g6 and c4, preparing bishop c3. I mean, it's, it's not winning, but um, it is quite a tempting uh, position for uh, for white you have to say but okay stockfish eight played queen a4 against alpha zero and to be honest it's uh, it's also a very good move so queen g6 um king f1 and i think here probably alpha zero made a bit of an inaccuracy although yeah i, I do wonder slightly about um about uh, stockfish's recommendation here i mean um i um uh, often in these positions, I just uh, put this on the um, on the uh, uh, Chessify cloud and uh, you know run Stockfish for um, um, billions of uh, of nodes uh, just to uh, to see what it finds. You know, I, I call it Godzilla fish, and um, and it was recommending Rook B two in this position, um, um, which I think is probably uh, um, a pretty good idea. Um, the idea being that after E four. E takes d4, c takes d4, queen f6, bishop g5, queen d6. This move was played to get the bishop, draw the bishop's protection of the queen side away. d5, knight e5, rook g1, knight 7 to g6, bishop c1. I mean, it's all pretty fraught here, really. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, Stockfish thought that you could uh, sacrifice the exchange with uh, with this and get some counterplay. I mean, the queen's coming into c5. You've got to keep control of the a6 square. Um, I mean, uh, Stockfish thought the best move was to go rook takes g6, takes, 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 a3, um, and knight g6, attacking h4, rook h1, king f8. Uh, and it thought that um, this was better for white, you know, kind of almost towards a, a pawn better for white, but not clearly lost. You know, so um, I'll probably run some engine games sometime just from uh, from these types of positions just to see. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not comfortable for uh, for black, put it that way. But Stockfish felt that uh, that this was um, possibly drawing for uh, for black. Um, Alpha zero um, went for um, um, an out and out aggressive line, rook b1. And um, here we got some incredible tactics. I mean, really, uh, um, yeah, I think Stockfish, uh, Stockfish eight here really showed everything that it can do um so it went e4 e takes d4 c takes d4 queen d6 d5 knight e5 and f4 and uh, this was where uh, alpha zero's expected score which had um, sort of risen up to to 43 percent suddenly dropped down to 27.3 so a huge drop um and i'm not quite sure what it had missed but um but anyway yeah i mean uh, here alpha zero started to think that it was in trouble but it remains exceptionally complicated knight g6 rook h3 a very clever idea if knight f4 then e5 wins a piece queen comes uh, across and wins the knight on f4 so c6 f5 knight e5 rook takes rook takes king g2 and then knight takes f5 my goodness as uh has Stockfish blundered because uh, e takes f5 allows queen d5 check, forcing forking the king and the bishop. But no, it's all uh, it's all under control. Bishop h5, queen c5. I mean, this, this looks really really dangerous. But uh, 
Uh, Stockfish is just uh, one step ahead all the way. Rook b2, rook c3, knight h4, check, king f1. Uh, the white king is, uh, is quite open, um, but um, yeah, the black king's also got a few, a few difficulties here. Queen b6, bishop b3, queen d8, pinning the d-pawn to the bishop on d1. Um, bishop c1, chasing the rook back. And uh, queen takes a7. Um, and uh, um, and actually, uh, um, c takes d5, e takes d5. And uh, Alpha Zero's uh, optimism had been growing in the last few moves. But then again, um, after this next move, rook b5 that it played, it was pessimistic again. Um, d6, queen takes d6. Um, so actually, you know, material is equal. And uh, the white king looks rather exposed. But actually, it's... Uh, Black's the one with the with the difficulties, just because the the white bishops are so strong. Bishop c2, g5, bishop a3. Those bishops suddenly, out of nowhere, really pointing towards the um, uh, the black king. And uh, and here, uh, possibly Alpha Zero made um, um, a uh, um, uh, probably a crucial mistake. Um, it could have gone queen b8, and um, after queen b8, rook b8. Um, bishop b7 knight h3 bishop f6 we reach positions very similar to the game but um black is a couple of tempi up which you know should give some chances to um to hold um after queen d8 um white played bishop b7 queen e8 bishop f6 rook b8 was played and now a4 and uh, what you see is that we ended up swapping off the queens um uh, but um, uh, but actually, in a much worse situation, Bishop G5 takes takes, and uh, White's actually yeah you know a pawn up, uh, and has got a loads more tempo, more tempi rather. Rook E8 is nice, but then Rook C7, and we're covered. Um, the amazing thing though is that the tactics carry on for for many moves. Knight F6, there's a fork of the knight, so we go Rook C4, hitting the knight on H4. Knight f3, bishop d6, stopping a fork on here. There is a fork on here, but it doesn't matter at all. Rook d8, rook g4 check. King h8, king e2, counterattacking against the knight. The rook covering any checks there. Knight f6, rook c4. Attacks, counterattacks. Knight g1 check, king f1, keeping a, a, an eye on the knight. Rook d6, king g1. And uh, I actually thought that this ending shouldn't be too bad for um, for black. I, I thought maybe, but um, uh, well, this a pawn is incredibly fast to advance, and um, actually black can't do very much about that. And uh, yeah, by the time the pawn gets to a six, it's it's kind of curtains for black. Uh, just show a few more moves: rook a six, rook c five, rook d five, rook f five, bishop d three, and the pawn runs, and the pawn will run again to a six. Knight e8, rook e3, bishop f1, nice and safe, rook e7. And here black felt it had to play knight a6. And after rook a7, the knight was lost. Or rather, well, black played uh, um, rook takes f1, king takes f1. But white won this ending uh, very comfortably. I mean, a really amazing game there from uh, from Stockfish. Uh, I mean, actually, yeah, you know, also a, a pretty cool uh, uh, go go made of it by Alpha Zero. But somehow Stockfish was always on... Uh, uh, always ahead of the game in uh, in that game so that's um but that was a very interesting idea and i think you know a pretty decent uh, uh plan of uh, of action from um from alpha zero and actually um um i think at quite big depths i think that uh, stockfish was also choosing this alpha zero plan for uh, for black but leela played um somewhat differently actually played a very interesting idea one that when i saw i thought really oh my goodness that's really that's that that can't be good it played uh, rook b8 queen a6 castles rook d1 and now not rook fd8 that would transpose into um uh, the alpha zero game it played the move knight d5 and uh, well i mean it's a completely different approach and it's it's not really one that appealed to me intuitively i mean i mean the point is you know this knight on c6 now that the pawn on b7 has disappeared it's not really stable so um it feels a bit loose and uh, you know when you play knight d5 removing its protection then the knight on c6 has to be defended by a major piece like the queen or the rook and that doesn't feel very efficient it just feels a bit loose as well 
Secondly, I wasn't really sure where that knight on d5 is headed. It just seems to be looking at squares that are all protected. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, Alpha Zero and also Stockfish, they, they just waited with the, uh, with the knight and, you know, could even have played it to g6 and h4, which uh, has also been seen in, a, in another Sufi game. And finally, you know, that knight on d5 is a target. Every move you're going to have to calculate whether e4 or c4 is possible. But OK, Leela's idea is actually to get the rook into b2 directly and doing so by putting pressure already on the c3 pawn. So if white ever plays bishop c1, then the pawn on c3 will be hanging. That's the idea. So bishop e2 was played, rook to b6, and now black can do um, a few things. Um, if you go queen c4, then there's this lovely idea, rook b2, bishop c1, rook c2. Uh, attacking the pawn on c3 and uh, yeah these tactics takes takes uh, here queen takes d5 rook d5 check there takes check sneaky knight h uh, oh sorry c6 played always um, rook a5 and rook d8 i mean incredible really on the edge tactics there um, and after king f3 rook takes 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 um, rook takes a7, g6, a4, rook d3. We pick up the c pawn, and uh, this is um, an ending that uh, Stockfish from afar assessed as 0 0.95, so that's a pawn up. Um, when it got closer and you know, searching into enormous depths, it said 0 0.43, which is basically you know, only a slight advantage to white. So, basically, uh, after queen c4, Stockfish thinks it can navigate this very narrow path to, uh, to a false draw. Um, obviously, Queen A4 obviously is uh, something quite um, quite interesting there. Um, I mean, if we go Rook B2, then we've got this D takes C5 idea again. Knight E5, F4, Knight D7. We go Rook G1, and then we go C4, and um, and White's really getting very active all all of a sudden. But the interesting idea there is to Black takes on D4, which I was never too keen on releasing the central tension, and then Rook B2. And um, yeah, I mean, there's some there's some sort of uh, problems here for White to get uh, developed. For example, um, uh, uh, oh, this was a nice trap. Castles, Rook F B eight, um, King H one, and then Black plays A five. And uh, you know, my first thought was, oh, I could go A three, couldn't I? Nothing. Uh, just uh, use that tempo to protect the pawn, cover the B four square. Yeah, then knight b6 traps the queen. So uh, that's an incredibly nasty, um, uh, nasty little plan there. So um, after rook b2, um, actually Stockfish was recommending rook c1. And uh, yeah, I mean, then we were going for this idea, funnily enough. Here, h4, rook fb8, queen takes a7, and then queen f6. And yeah, it's one of those, really. I mean, um, uh, white's two pawns up, but um, black's, I, I guess, pretty solid. It's not very easy to see how um, how white uh, improves its position too much and uh, well you know black's going to play h5 and then just try and double on the seventh you know so uh, there's a lot of counterplay a lot of counterplay in there so um uh stockfish actually played uh, queen d3 which is quite a nice move i mean looking for stuff like d takes c5 or f4 or e4 um so e takes d4 is played c takes d4 rook b2 a3, um, saving the pawn on a3. It's also a useful move because it stops, you know, this move e takes d4 gives black the b4 square for the knight, so we, we cover it with a3. Rook fb8, castles, um, and now this very useful move h6, just getting out of back rank threats, and that means then that um, uh, the black's rook now is ready to go into b3 and take the pawn on a3 and not worry about uh, anything happening on the king side too much. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is really a crucial position here. Uh, you need a good move here from White. Um, I mean, White's got the, uh, <coughs> pardon me, White's got the, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the two, uh, the two bishops, he's got a center, he's got an extra pawn. But yeah, it, pieces are rather constricted. So, you know, what do you do about that? Um, I mean, you've got to watch out as well. I mean, something like bishop c1, I just go rook e2, queen e2, queen g6 check, king h1, Knight c3, and uh, amazingly enough, this is leading to a, a draw. Queen c4, queen h5, takes rook b6, queen a8 check, keeping on f3, and giving a check. What could be better? <coughs> queen h5, 
But um, after this position, um, actually, there's really no way for uh, for white to avoid the perpetual. Um, black's got ideas of going c6, and if you go rook g1, um, I just go rook b8, and uh, queen c6, rook b6, queen a8, rook b8, and queen b8 allows queen f3 check, and queen takes d1, rook g1, queen f3 with perpetual. Lovely, absolutely lovely. So. What uh, Stockfish did was a very fine move. Um, played queen e4. So basically, um, black is going to get the opportunity to do something big with its major pieces. Stockfish now gambling on kingside counterplay. And uh, where does that kingside counterplay come in? Well, I mean, we've got two bishops with which you can hopefully do something. This light square bishop in particular might come to d3 or to c4. And we've got the open g file. So we're going to play king h1, rook g1, and well... You know, combine that with a queen and maybe one or two, even two bishops. You might get some play. So bishop c4 is annoying. Uh, for example, uh, you know, rook a2, I've got bishop c4. Um, also, um, you know, you've got to watch out as well for uh, um, four moves like, uh, yeah, rook a b3. Um, of course, we can go bishop c4. So um, black played knight f6 first, queen h4. And this is really a bit of a crucial position here. Um, I mean, black can't take the um, uh, the pawn immediately because we've got bishop c1, which is rather annoying. But you've got to decide, really. I mean, are you going to try and just recapture this uh, a pawn with your uh, one of your major pieces? So, for example, the rook. Or are you going to go all in and really try and exploit not the weakness of the a pawn, but the weakness of the seventh rank and these two bishops on uh, on d2 and e2? And, uh, well, that's what Leela decided. I mean, Leela felt that... Uh, um, it had a great way to really, you know, ride on the on the edge, the precipice, and uh, but emerge, you know, with a um, with a, a, a great position. Um, but actually, well, as you can uh, imagine from my tone, yeah, it didn't turn out that well. Um, I mean, th this is the the main stockfish line actually. Rook a two, bishop c four, rook a three, queen g three. Interestingly enough, rook b six takes takes. Rook a1, rook takes, rook takes. And yeah, I mean, Stockfish assesses this as, uh, I think, 0.85, I think, um, which is, you know, slight to clear advantage, basically. And uh, to be honest, it does not look very pleasant for uh, for black with those uh, the two bishops, those weak pawns, and, uh, you know, white's got loads of ideas for improving his position, starting with, uh, you know, bringing the king to d3, maybe, and playing e4. You know, it's it's not going to be pleasant at all. So I think, you know, Leela would have uh, suffered quite a bit anyway. But, you know, maybe, uh, um, you know, engines can hold amazing things. So, you know, you wouldn't put it past Leela to be able to hold this. Though you wouldn't say that it was going to be comfortable. But Leela played this incredibly risky idea, Queen d5, which, you know, is quite, quite beautiful in many ways. Um, just threatening in actual fact, easy to miss, to play Queen a2 and attack the bishop on d2 and then the bishop on e2 beyond it. So... But Stockfish played king h1, queen a2, rook g1, rook comes to g file. We're threatening queen takes f6. And here, uh, so yeah, rook takes d2, queen f6 is really powerful. So Leela played knight e8. Gets the knight out of the way, defends g7, and this pin is still here. Um, but here Stockfish played a, a, an absolutely brilliant move that uh, Leela had, um, well, missed, I think, is always... Uh, um, going a little bit too far, but um, really underestimated. Um, so, I mean, what is White's threat? White's threat is to play bishop c4, simply. That's the uh, the threat. But, of course, there is this move. Rook takes d2. Rook takes c6. And now there's rook takes e2. Destroying the threat of bishop c4, picking up a piece. And what does White have? Well, White has rook takes h6, threatening mate. But now Leela thought that it could play g6. Now, First of all, um, f6 is not a good idea. Uh, rook h8 check, king there, queen h5 check. King e7, rook e8 takes, rook g7 check. And uh, then the, the very nice idea, king d8, queen b5, threatening queen b8 and queen d7 mate. Rook e7, and then we go rook g8 check. Queen g8, queen b8 with uh, a winning position. Not trivial for a, a human to win in uh, uh, a blitz level, but uh, for engines, absolutely trivial. 
So um, G6 was Leela's idea, but it was only when it was um, looking at the position after Rook C1 that it suddenly realised the huge flaw in its plan, because after Rook H8 check King G7, it's not that white can only take perpetual, you know, with, uh, with Rook H7, for example, or, uh, you know, Queen H6 check, whoops, King F6. No, white has the incredible idea, um, E4. And what is white intending? White's just intending to play E5, cutting off the F6 square, and then Queen H6 or H7 will be mate. And it's incredibly difficult for black to do anything about this without losing oodles of material. So, for example, rook takes F2, which is probably the best. Rook takes H2 check. Well, queen H2 is just simply a win for, uh, for white. I mean, uh, that's uh, the exchange up with a, a super position. Um, I think maybe the very nicest line is queen b3, attacking f3, which um, in many ways seems to uh, really interrupt uh, white's attacking uh, structure. But then there's this move queen h5, defending f3 and, uh, and meeting the move rook takes f2, which looks you know great, threatening queen f3, with takes, takes, rook h7 check, um, king f8, Queen h6 check, king g8, queen g6 check, king f8, queen h6, king g8, rook h8 check. I mean, I wouldn't like to try and work this out, uh, how this is actually winning. Queen f8, king e6, queen f5 check, king d6, rook h6 check. I think you can, you're starting to see what's, uh, what's happening there. Knight f6, queen f6, king d7, queen c6 check, king d8, rook h8 check, king e7 and rook h7 and uh, mate is uh, coming very very soon so um yeah a very long line of course but i mean uh, it's this move that's the real key just threatening e5 taking away that f6 square really really amazing so um uh yeah i mean this was really the uh, the crux of the whole game you know and um uh um well i mean after rook c1 Leela went for a massive think and then played rook 2b6. Um, but after rook gd1, queen a3. So Leela got its pawn back. Um, but then bishop c4, knight e7. Queen h5, hitting f7, rook f6. Rook a1, queen d6. Rook a6, rook b6, rook takes a7. The white picked up a pawn. Uh, and you know I, I, all the compensation that black had, you know, the really active major pieces, the constricted white pieces, that's all gone, you know. And uh, Stockfish thought it was 2.61, Leela thought it was plus 1.69. You know, both considered the position winning, and uh, and Stockfish converted without too much fuss. But uh, well, it took 98 moves, so um, uh, I won't give you that one. But there's a link, uh, you know, in the uh, um, um, uh, you'll see it in the video and. Uh, um, you know, you can follow the rest of the game if uh, if you want to. So, um, yeah, I mean, in conclusion, I mean, this line has, has led to some fascinating engine games, you know. But I, I think the conclusion really is clear that it's uh, it's clearly better for white. Um, I think in both the Stockfish Alpha Zero and the Stockfish Leela games, you know, best play from black was, was just a difficult end game, really. And uh, I think that this last game in particular shows, you know, how careful black has to be against uh, white's advantages. So the two bishops... Um, powerful centre and well of course an open G file once uh, uh, the Black King castles so um, so there we are I mean I hope this video proved instructive uh, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and uh, if you want don't forget to subscribe and uh, because uh, we're going to analyse many more fantastic ideas and uh, and give a lot more analysis from uh, from engine games so thanks very much for watching